Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I've uh, received a few questions about the audio setup that I'm using. Um, a number of people said, hey, your audio sounds pretty good. What is it that you're doing to get that type of audio? And let me kind of characterize what I mean by fairly decent audio. Um, obviously, I'm very limited in terms of gear, um, and most of us are. Uh, but in you'll notice in, in films that you really respect, um, and almost almost anything you'll see in the theater, obviously, the sound never just detracts from, but very much adds to the overall feeling of the story that's being told. And that's one thing that I, I worked really hard to accomplish. And the way I got into that was that I actually had done some uh, just audio podcasting previously. So I had done a lot of research and work to kind of get the, my sound um, where I wanted it, and then had to kind of translate that over to video when I started doing a little bit more video. And so usually the quality sound is something that sounds very intimate or sounds uh, a little bit more natural, sounds like you're relatively close to the actor or actress, uh, depending on, on what you're doing, or if there's an if you're doing an interview type situation, you feel like you're pretty close to the interviewee and the interviewer. Um, you don't get a lot of echo in the room unless that's specifically a sound you're going for. Um, and you don't get a lot of other noise from other things that, that you didn't really intend to have in there. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of those ways you're going to, some of the ways you can accomplish it. Now, keep in mind, this is very much uh, based on my own opinion, and I have plenty of biases. So this is not the, the end all be all, but this is how I do it and uh, what I find works pretty well for me. And I have some kind of, uh, some strong opinions on certain ways of doing things. Um, number one, a lot of high quality video or film that you see, the, in, in the cases where, where that's shot, the camera and the audio rigs are separate from each other. They're not the same thing. Now that's not always the case, obviously. There are cases where the microphone will be mounted to the rig that the camera is mounted to. Um, but in most cases, you're going to see those are independent. And there are a number of reasons for that. And this is coming probably the most important thing that that um, that I can convey in regards to the how I get my sound, and that is get the microphone, whatever kind of microphone you're using, get the microphone as close as possible to your talent or your actors. Probably the most important thing, because any microphone, regardless of what type it is, the closer it is to your talent, um, the less noise you're going to pick up and the cleaner signal you're going to get. So. That's probably the very most important thing. You also get that that intimate sound. You've you've noticed when when you're using your on uh, on board mic on your camera, um, or you have another mic that's not that's more than five or ten feet from your actor. You always get that kind of far away sound, and it's not usually what you're trying to accomplish. And you know, under most circumstances, um, so number one thing: get the microphone as close as as you can to your actors. Um, and again, uh, there are cases where you'll have a camera mounted mic or the mic will be mounted on the same rig as the camera. And that's fine in cases where you're going to be doing a really close up shot. And when I say close up, typically what I'm meaning is um, I like to have the microphone three feet or less, preferably if you can, two feet from your actor, because I think that gives you the cleanest sound, the most intimate sound, the, the you get the, the rich lower end, especially of men's voices. Um, that that's really important for that sound. So, again, it can be done on a camera-mounted rig, but even even in those cases, that there's a pretty rare set of circumstances where you can still get that great audio sound um, and have it mounted on your camera. So, a lot of people are doing that lately. I've noticed, um, but I also haven't been very impressed with a lot of the sound that a lot of them are, are getting. Um, and again, it's because the microphone's just plain and simply too far away from their their actors. Um, so one of the best ways that uh, another thing that you can do um, and that I do typically is uh, I use a shotgun microphone and uh, here's an example of a shotgun microphone. This is the Rode NTG2 which is about a $270 microphone and you'll notice it's an interesting design. It's got this it's kind of long and tubular and it has these slits along the side and uh, then it's the, the sensitive part is right up here. So what a shotgun mic is good for is it picks up a, a sound in a very narrow pattern um, and it can also extend a little bit farther away than most microphones can in terms of its pickup. 
So um, these slits on the side actually help eliminate any noise that may be coming from the sides. And so it uses a hypercardioid or a, or a super cardioid pickup pattern, which means it's pretty much just going to pick up your talent's voice and it's going to reject a lot of the other sound around it. So this is probably uh, the number two secret, if you will. Number one secret, again, is getting your mic as close as you can to your talent. Number two, I think a shotgun mic makes an enormous difference. And there are lots of these on the market. This is just one I happen to use. Um, it's a f it's a fine one. It's not, it's not a top of the line one, but uh, it gets the job done pretty nicely. Um, and typically what I'll do is when I'm recording, say for example, in this type of environment where it's where it's just me talking about something, um, I'll have it mounted just uh, off camera right down here. So it's probably less than about two feet from my from my mouth. And uh, that, that produces a pretty nice clean signal. Now, this type of microphone, you have to have a special hookup. Um, it uses XLR cables, which are these three prong cables. And you've probably seen them if you've ever been around a professional level microphone. And uh, here's an example of one of those cables. The, the nice thing that uh, this three prong design provides is it's called a balanced cable. And what that means is that the signal that travels through this um, is a lot more, uh, it's able to withstand a lot uh, and reject a lot more interference. Uh, whereas if you have something like, uh, Rode also makes a what they call a video mic. Just set that down. Uh, and their, their video mic is actually made to mount on the camera. So there's your first issue, potentially, unless you're going to do a lot of close-up shots, um, is that it's not getting the microphone as close as it really should, in my opinion, to your actor. Um, but secondly, um, it's using just a single stereo plug that goes into your mic into your camera. And that plug is not a balanced uh, plug, and so the signal can degrade pretty quickly. And uh, there definitely is a difference between those. So again, the uh, Rode NTG3, again, is what, is I, what I use, shotgun mic through an XLR cable. Now, that cable has to go somewhere, and, you're, and your next question is, well, what do you hook that up to? And in my case, I'm using a, uh, an audio interface. This is just a little kind of aluminum box. Um, you'll notice it has the connectors right here for the XLR inputs. These are uh, microphone preamplifiers. And so the signal comes in here, it amplifies it, um, and then this just has a USB connector that hooks up to my computer. So I run uh, the audio that I record into my computer, and then I do the video, obviously, with my camera, in this case, a Canon 60D. Now, when I'm recording with the Canon 60D, I still record audio there, and I use that as reference audio, because at some point you've got to get the audio from your quality professional microphone synced up with your video. And so I record on the Canon just to use that as reference audio so that when I bring the audio and the uh, video into my editor, in most cases I'm using Sony Vegas, um, I can sync those two up and then get rid of the audio that came from the Canon, uh, the camera originally. Um, some people uh, argue that, gosh, that's a kind of a, that's a hard thing to do. It takes a lot of time. It's sophisticated, it's uh, complicated, um, but I don't find that that's the case at all. All you do is zoom way in, um, you get the little audio sine waves, and you can you can line those up very easily. It, it takes, you know, you pretty much just do it once, you lock the two tracks back together, and then you can slice and dice and do all your editing with no problem whatsoever. And for, you know, most, most clips, I don't see a problem with that. Now, there are... Um, audio interfaces that you can use are actually called uh, field preamplifiers that you can hook up to your camera um, to feed the signal into the camera and then you plug one of these professional level mics into that. Um, the problem with that typically again is, or actually it's not a problem, it's actually a, a fine thing. You then avoid the, the issue of having to sync in post, but um, a, what, what happens is you're using an unbalanced signal to go from that microphone preamplifier into your camera. So you're potentially losing some some quality there as well. So again, kind of just a personal bias thing. Um, I find that the, the audio comes out better this way. Now, if you're in the field, you have a little bit of a problem because you're not going to be dragging your computer around with you. A great device for those kind of circumstances is the Zoom H4n. Uh, a company named uh, Zoom, actually it's a company named Samson that makes the Zoom products. Um, and they include some of those uh, those uh, preamplifiers built in, or those mic preamps in, in that device, and it's a portable device that's powered by battery, and you can carry that around with you. In my opinion, that's a better way to go.
So that's just a short introduction to getting better audio for your video. We'll be back again with some more details on how to make it even better.